I'd like to welcome everyone to the inaugural um, Alti Pavilion and Conference. Uh, this is the first year that we've held it in conjunction with the High End Society. And this is the first college, and uh, this presentation is part of that uh, college. Uh, Alti is uh, the uh, Audio and Loudspeaker Technologies International, and it's a membership-driven uh, organization, trade organization, uh, supporting its members uh, with product, putting suppliers and vendors together, buyers and sellers, and uh, talent search. So um, we're exhibiting over in uh, Hall 1, and you can visit our CEO and president, uh, Barry Vogel. I'm here today participating on behalf of one of our members, uh, Bayes Audio. And uh, Bayes Audio is uh, an inventor of some advanced technologies. And I want to talk a little bit about their new product, which is a 180 degree BRS or Bayes radial speaker. Uh, this presentation is a, is a continuation of a pre previous presentation here in the college. Uh, from Gamax Labs, which did some really super excellent work with finite element modeling. And, um, and this is kind of the continuation where they did modeling, we're kind of doing in the measurement. So uh, this is a electroacoustics transducer that's not like any other. And oftentimes, I, I got in this business maybe 20 years ago, and uh, it was an ongoing joke that... Uh, people would come up and say, well, it's revolutionary. And the ongoing joke was it wasn't really revolutionary, it was evolutionary. This year's the 100th year anniversary of a, of a typical loudspeaker uh, patent. And for the last 100 years, uh, it's been basically an evolution, despite some claims. However, today we are looking at a completely revolutionary different type driver that is nothing like you've seen uh, in the last hundred years. And that's why I kind of use this slide is because it's a light bulb, it's a new idea, and it's not an evolution of a cone transducer. Um, the inventor and patent holder of the Bay radial speaker is Zoltan Bay. And he comes from a long line of inventors that have, that have worked on microphones and worked in the space program, and, and it's a pretty impressive family heritage. And uh, Zoltan Bey, he's Hungarian, and here he's shown holding a prototype of a 360-degree uh, BRS that was proof of concept for a patent. This is patented in any number of countries, and that's... The, the original model, he was part of the Alti incubator program that was launched. Uh, we launched his business several years ago at uh, Alti Expo. So um, he also has other patents. For example, he has a, uh, uh, a amplifier patent that is basically is a Class A, gets rid of the Class A switching noise, yet is packaged and has a thermal efficiency of AB. It's very impressive. But we're here talking today about um, his new, uh, new design. <clears throat> and it's, uh, he has an existing business and he does finished loudspeaker systems. And this is what he has right now. We have the Carante and a the Counterpoint. These are two models that are pretty commercially successful and they're being produced now for four years or so. They're being exhibited over Hi-Fi Deluxe in Munich, and there's a shuttle you can go back and forth to see those. This device in the middle between the two woofers is the actual uh, BRS based radial speaker, which is a 360 degree omni speaker. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about the performance of the existing technology before we get into the new design. So the speaker, the loudspeaker's Omni, and here's at one kilohertz, you can see it's almost a perfect circle. And also I wanna bring up the, the fact that uh, if you look at the frequency response function, it goes out to 50K. 
And that's because the Asian market approached us, uh, Bayes Radio, uh, Bayes Audio, and said, uh, it's very important to our market that we're high res. It was called high res, and then that market, high res, meant 50K uh, frequency response. This is a pretty amazing slide. This shows the polar response at 43 kilohertz. And while it's not a perfect circle, it's very close. Now the microphone locating is uh, the red line, which is negative 90 degrees. So you can see that 90 degrees off axis, either plus or minus 90 degrees off axis, it's down maybe 5 dB or so. This is uh, pretty impressive to do that uh, level of omni uh, polar response. The loudspeaker, this particular one, uh, even though he's got it pumped up at a pretty high volume, but the sensitivity of this unit's probably about 94 dB or something like that. So it has great polar response, but it is well behaved. And as you can see, uh, it has no nasty breakup modes. The waterfall shows is a 25 dB plot, and it shows that it, and within one microsecond or one millisecond, it uh, the decay rate is pretty phenomenal. Um, this is almost unheard of. You see that there's no trailing resonances or anything like that. Uh, you know, you may see one out here at about 5K, but if you notice, it decays so fast that it's inconsequential. So this exhibits a very, very well-behaved transducer. So it measures well, behaves well, but is it well-received? Is it commercially viable? And as you can see from this uh, slide that it wins best in show. It's a product of the year, several places. And uh, so it not only measures well, but it sounds well, and it's well-received by the market. <clears throat> So what we did, or what Bayes Audio did next was they said, okay, let's take this 360 degree omni technology and apply it to 180 degree uh, tweeter and, and uh, make it commercially vi available by either licensing or OEM. So this is the form factor of the 180 degree BRS and it looks you know, pretty simple, looks a little bit like a ribbon, but it is not a ribbon loudspeaker. It's completely different technology. Um, the, the sound pressure emanates from the black area. That's about 100 millimeters tall uh, to give you some kind of idea. It's got a small rear chamber, uh, nothing, nothing too large. So as an OEM supplier, you have choices of uh, ribbons, electrostats, horns, you've got thousands of domes. So the question is, why would you use a BRS? Why would you use this new type technology? And I think there's really three reasons. There's performance, quality control, and cost. And we'll go through those a little bit and the advantages. So right off the top of the bat, does it have the same great behavior as the 360 degree Omni? And for the most part, you can see that it does. It does have a little bit of a, uh, like everything, it does have a little bit of a mode, but it de decays so fast it's inconsequential. And you can see also that it's, uh, it gets out a high enough frequency. So this unit is well behaved, doesn't have any nasty breakup modes that are objectionable. It's reasonably flat. This is the next slide about performance. And as you can see, I, I want to point out a couple things. It gets out to 20K. There's a roll off at about 4K. <clears throat> that's because this is a prototype that was tested without the IEC baffle, and that's the baffle step. So once it gets mounted in a baffle, an, an IEC baffle, it's pretty safe to assume that the roll off is going to be somewhere about one kilohertz or something like that. This uh, particular unit's 100 millimeter long, and its uh, response is probably, or its sensitivity is probably going to be about 94 dB. Once again, it's flat out to 20K. 
But what you're really going to be buying is that polar response. And you can see we have anywhere from 1K to 20 kilohertz. And even at 20 kilohertz, it's basically only down 5 dB at 75 degrees off axis. That's unheard of. No dome uh, of, of any cost that I can think of can even come close to that polar response. The other, the other benefits not shown here, but some of the other benefits, it's a very, very uh, flat free, uh, impedance uh, curve. The resonance of the impedance is very low Q and the, the magnitude is not high. I think that's very important because now it makes your crossover design really a simple uh, thing. You can even do first order crossovers so your, your time alignment's real good. First order crossover is going to minimize your energy storage, uh, give you very, very fast uh, coherent response. The other, th although you can't see any of, of it from here, the, the, the way this coil, the, it doesn't really have a, a voice coil per se like a regular tweeter. It has a, a different type configuration um, and that is, lends itself well to cooling so there's really no power compression. And then the last but not least, uh, as far as performance goes, is while this is a 100 millimeter uh, BRS with a sensitivity about 94, you can scale this up and down. A 50 millimeter will be about 86 dB, but you can scale this up geometrically up to 115 dB sensitivity. That's pretty phenomenal. So now your markets are open to two channel, they're open to pro sound, uh, they're even open to, to smart speakers, um, the limitless possibilities. Um, and because it's already got a Gamax ComSol model, this is, can be easily scaled up and down to whatever kind of specification you'd like. The second thing is um, quality control. This is something that people do not, it's, it's often overlooked. And this loudspeaker lends, uh, lends itself well to quality control and low scrap rates. Um, basically, the loudspeaker has a couple of membranes in it and these membranes oscillate back and forth. And these membranes are impervious to humidity and temperature largely during the manufacturing process. So if you get a membrane now or you get the membrane a year from now or six, six years from now, it's going to be measured exactly the same. Um, the nice part about the membranes is they ship and store flat. That's very important in the manufacturing process. And um, the other item is that because the membranes are so constant, their mass is constant. And I'll come back to that in a minute. The loudspeaker, uh, the BRS, has a type of construction in which it does not have the, the standard spider that you see. And spiders at best are plus or minus 15%. A super high quality spider, the spring rate's plus or minus 10%. This type loudspeaker, uh, electroacoustic transducer, because of the way it's made, the, what the equivalent spider, the restoring force, is constant. It's probably 2%. So now you have the membrane is a constant mass. Uh, the spider equivalent is constant. So now your F sub S is constant. I mean, you should be able to build these within plus or minus 2%. So your scrap rate is diminished greatly and your quality control goes way up. Um, the voice coil equivalent, what we're using is a, basically a voice coil equivalent. Uh, the resistance is going to be exact time in, time out. And last but not least, the way this loudspeaker is, is constructed, there's no, the gap is not super critical, so there's no shims. The shims don't wear out. You don't have to worry about getting the shim in far enough or out far enough. Did, is it worn out? What's the temperature of the shim that day? That's all out. This thing can be built um, uh, with super high quality and, and you'll get the same unit from beginning to end. So the quality controls there. 
The last thing is, is cost. So you can do a couple different options. One is you can license it and um, build it yourself with your own engineering in-house, or you can purchase OEM uh, from a manufacturer, uh, and we have several that, that will work with you. And if you choose the OEM, of course, you don't have to buy the license, but you can take your engineering uh, in out of house uh, between maybe uh, Bayes Audio is one. Um, uh, Gamax uh, can do uh, your ComSol modeling for you. So um, once again, this, this, it could also be partially automated. If you look at how this is built, a lot of the glues are eliminated and uh, it can be built almost um, partially, not completely, but partially automated with robotics. Once again, there's no shims, no spiders, you know, mixing up the goo that day for that particular spider. Um, it also, you can buy prefabbed membrane conductor assemblies so that that's already done for you. Uh, the rear enclosure that I showed in the uh, form factor is in plastic injection molding. It's nothing trick. Uh, if you wanted, you could machine something. And once again, I want to go back to the fact that uh, your raw materials are shipped flat and they store well, which is quite critical in the manufacturing process. So when you look at those uh, three things, you, you have uh, performance, quality control, and cost, and those are all uh, easily handled. So what goes on next is, okay, you, you wish to pursue the potential and the possibilities here. You know, what's the next step? Well, the first is you can obviously go to the Bayes Audio uh, website, uh, or during the show here, you can go face-to-face -face and meet uh, Zoltan Bay, which is the inventor and patent holder. He, once again, he is, has his systems are being uh, auditioned over at Munich Marriott at the living room. Um, and there's a shuttle that goes over back and forth. Um, last but not least, of course, you can contact Zoltan Bay, uh, the inventor, uh, via email or uh, just pick up the phone and give him a call. So that was a pretty quick presentation. I think I hit all the high points. Uh, did anyone have any kind of questions or anything along those lines? Well, um, Thanks for coming, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, please visit us uh, at the Alti Pavilion uh, over in Hall 1, and you can always contact uh, Zoltan, Zoltan Bay uh, directly. Thank you very much.